Hello and welcome back, fellow summer offers. Season three, episode four. <laughs> <laughs> that took a lot of brain power. I did it backwards. I want to say week four. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I was? I was gonna say yeah. Welcome back, folks. We're finally in 2021. Like I forgot the Fourth of July is not New Year's Eve for like two, two seconds. Yeah. <laughs> It's a new, new year. year. Yeah. We're free. We're free. We've made it through 2020. We've thrown off the Brits. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, which this is really interesting. What? Because we're, it's 4th of July. This will not be released on 4th of July. It'll be released probably, you're like, it's like late July. What are you talking about? But like, <laughs> this is our 4th of July episode for us. So hopefully you don't hear yeah. fireworks in the background. But we okay. threw off the Brits. And then we mm. watched a movie. Well, about the French. About Never the mind. French. <laughs> they all have British going? accents, so I yeah, thought they're French. Okay, and I forget they're French. They're not quite British accents. They're kind of like that, like nondescript American. Wait, they're not. Well, you know, some uh, people weren't very good at it. No, they weren't. <laughs> but they were all trying to do British. Okay. I'm just gonna throw that out there now. Nobody was trying to do something weird. Everybody was trying to do a British dialect. <laughs> And some succeeded. Can I give you a pause button? Yeah. Should we talk about what movie it is we're talking about? Yeah. Well, no. Let's keep talking around we'll it and see if people talking. can figure it out. <laughs> no one will ever figure it we out. We won't even title this one. We'll say, unknown. You better peek in to find out. <laughs> or just listen to last week's episode. Yeah, I guess we announced it last week. Oh, Ty, what movie did we watch this week? Ever After. Ever After, colon, A Cinderella Story. You know what's funny is I've called it. In like passing, and you've never corrected me on this, but I called it Cinderella story one time. Oh, mm-hmm. this week, and you know what else I accidentally called it? I called it Never Been Kissed <laughs> two times this week when we were prepping for it. I was like, "When are we watching Never Been Kissed?" It's like, "Oh yeah, we already watched <laughs> that movie." Second, that's that's the it. other Drew Barrymore <laughs> yes. movie around this time, right around this time, the year right after this. This came out in nineteen ninety eight. Ooh, great year! Yeah, that's when Can't Hardly Wait came out. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. same time. Wow, what a difference. Yep. Those are great years. <laughs> I have been waiting to watch this movie for years, it feels like. I don't know why I just didn't watch it. I think I knew in my <laughs> you heart. You did watch I... it one day. Did I, I came yep, without you? I came in. I think we were in this house even. I don't even think it was our old no, house. No, it was the old house. I've okay. never watched Maybe it, it was our old house. Mm-hmm. And, but I came home, and we were already doing summers off mm-hmm. because you told me, you were like, hey, you got to get out of here. And I was like, why? Oh, What's going yeah. on? And you're like, you can't be in here because I want to do this movie eventually. Mm-hmm. And you were right at the party scene with the fairy wings. Oh, was I? That's exactly where you oh. were because I walked in and part of me felt like I had already seen this little fairy yeah, wing scene. Yeah, that's what you had said before. But I didn't remember anything of it. In fact, let me tell you what I thought this movie was like. Sure. Because I was so off, it's not even funny. <laughs> I thought this was a modern day adaptation. Oh, really? I did not think it was historical. What? I thought because Even with the fairy costume, with the fairy costume, I, think it was just a I weird thought dance. that was a thing. She was at. This is just so embarrassing now. I <laughs> thought she was at prom in that scene because <laughs> I walked in, I saw her in a fairy costume. There's tons of people around. I didn't notice they're all wearing weird costumes. Sure. And I thought she came to prom in this fairy costume, and she was like Cinderella, and she's like yeah. in high school, and her stepsisters get to go, but she has to get homeschooled. Oh, God. And then she shows up at the prom. Let's be honest, I hate this With this fairy already. costume, <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. It's like a mixture of old and new. No, not at all. <laughs> that's not what this movie was. Not at all. So... At the very beginning, I guess when you when did you figure it out that it wasn't? Oh, instantaneously, yeah. like probably right even through the credits music. I don't know. Were you like, like excited about that? I was. I was yeah. more excited, yeah. but I also I was excited to see too how they made like mix modern <laughs> with old. But it it is definitely better than that would have been. I can already tell you. That. Sure. Here's what I'll say. If you're really still jonesing for a modern day Cinderella story, why don't you take a little stroll with Hilary Duff and go watch <laughs> a Cinderella story <laughs> with her and Chad Michael Murray, I think is the guy. Who's Chad Michael Murray? He's in, um, oh, bollocks. What's the name of? Oh, gee golly. Oh, Willow, shooty patooties. Um, One Tree Hill. He's the main guy in that one. Kind of okay. blonde, yep. buzzed hair yep. a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Think, yeah. Is that movie good? No. 
No. Is it on the list though? Are we gonna watch Absolutely, it? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to have done. too many Cinderella stories in one season. <laughs> hey, I don't want to spoil. I don't want bury the lead. We talked about that last episode Did or two we? episodes ago. I, Burying yeah. the lead. Bury the lead. Yep. So I don't want to bury the lead. But at the same time, oh wait, we talked about this in that episode too, because <laughs> burying the lead makes it sound like you should just come right out and say what you want to say uh-huh. instead of like having all this fluff and junk that covers it up. Yes. But I keep I keep using it as if you bury the lead, you like say what you think too soon mm-hmm. instead of building up to it. I see. But I don't know what is correct still, and <laughs> we I think we've even had this discussion maybe on the podcast or maybe this was just in real life. <laughs> but I don't want to bury the lead. But this. Is supposed to be payback season, right? Yeah. I did not feel like this movie instrumented our the theme our theme of payback season. Yeah. What I'll say is, I think this was maybe a peace offering from my <laughs> camp to your <laughs> camp to say, "Hey, I still enjoy watching movies with you, even if maybe the last few ones haven't been stellar for both of us." Sure. And what I think you will be disappointed to hear. Is yeah. that my faction has rejected your peace offering, as you will find out at the conclusion of this episode, with the strongest cannon oh, fire no. shot that you have ever, ever heard. It just, is loud and booming. I am starting to sweat thinking about this selection. Oh my gosh, it's going to hey, be terrible. Hey, I don't know if we're using this right, but don't bury the lead. Don't bury the lead, okay. Or maybe you are. I don't get it yet. <laughs> Well, okay, so we know that this movie, for those of you who haven't seen it, 1998, uh-huh. Drew Barrymore, peak Drew Barrymore, I think, yeah. like age 23 this oh, year. she's 23? She's 23. She's... She also did Wedding Singer this year oh. and Ever After. She just never been kissed the year after this. Some would say that that was a misstep, but it was also very popular, so you know what? it's With, a heyday for her. To go back to it Never Been Kissed, though, mm-hmm. that, it was an entertaining movie. Yeah. Like it, she's entertaining problematic it. as heck, but like super fun conversation <laughs> to be mm-hmm. had after it, and that was a fun movie. So I'm gonna say this about Drew Barrymore. Okay, Let's this get is it. a strong time period for her. Yeah. Wedding singer, she is fantastic. Mm-hmm. She's so good. Mm-hmm. And then in this movie, mm-hmm. her British is awful. Yeah, it's but not great. No, it's it, not well, great. it's not awful. That's too strong. Her British, she slips. Every once in a while, especially when she gets mad, yep. which we're doing cat on a tin roof right now. When that I get mad, I happens. fall out of Southern, too. That happens. It's a thing. But f- sometimes it's pretty strong through mm-hmm. whole sections of the movie, and she just, like, misses it every once in a while. Sure. But I think she is cute as a button in this movie. Isn't she? I thought she was gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Now, is she as cute as Lily James as Cinderella? I'm a huge Lily James guy. <laughs> I think Lily James is hotter. Yeah. But. In, like, a... Like an obvious way, sure. You know, but Drew Barrymore was very cute in this movie. Yeah, yeah. She has a wonderful um, ability to like. You know how we were talking about certain people have certain time periods. Like Gina mm-hmm. Davis looks amazing in the forties. Sure. Rachel McAdams yep. looked great in the forties. I think she looks really great in this time period, which is we think early fifteen hundreds. Early fifteen hundreds. Felt like we like were that. getting near the Tudors. They mentioned mm-hmm. Henry the Eighth getting divorced, yes. which we'll get into problematic section. But, uh... <laughs> yes. I allowed Ty to have a whole section called Historical Problems <laughs> <laughs> because this is historical fiction. So we've got yeah. all kinds of characters in it. Some are real people. Um, some maybe weren't really alive at the same time as others, mm-hmm. but it's just fun. It's just fanfic. It's great. Then it's true. The story. Oh, yes. Now then, what is that phrase you use? Once upon a time... <laughs> Grim Brothers, you read the story of the Cindy girl. Isn't it, they only call you the Cindy girl? The little Cinder girl. The little Cinder girl. The beginning, yes. I thought they were German at first. So like, oh, was, well, like, aren't the brothers Grim German? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, they are, aren't they? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so did you write the? Uh, <laughs> I'm already doing terrible. We always we always talk about like how when you're just in life and you're trying to go into dialects. It usually goes much better than you put a microphone in front of us. Mm-hmm. And now all of a sudden we are the worst dialecticians <laughs> on the planet. On the planet. <laughs> Ty, before we get too much into it, I know it's a yeah. Cinderella story, but why don't you give me a little synopsis or tell me like maybe a couple of things that make this stand out from other Cinderella sure. stories. So this Cinderella version is... It's in the early 1500s, like we mentioned. In France. In France. 
and which I was a little thrown off by because I thought it was sure. maybe going to be German. Sure. Seems like a German tale. It might tale be to a me. German tale. I'm not sure. <laughs> and but at the same time, we are in 1500s France, and like Rach said, it's kind of a historical fiction where you still go through the whole story of like meeting this prince. She meets this prince. She loses her father. She has an evil stepmother and the stepsisters. Um, but some unique takes on everything. Yeah. So, like, mm -hmm. what I'll say is, and without get, we don't have to get detailed about this yet because I feel like we should get into it a little bit later. But there's, like, a humanistic quality that has been infused into this fairy tale. Yeah. We there's take no the magic, magic out no magic. and we infuse it with reality. And in that mm -hmm. sense, we create a brand new story mm -hmm. that is intriguing to watch. Now, here's what I will say, though. I bet there were a lot of people who came to it who were very disappointed. What? Like kids and stuff. Can't you imagine? They're like, where's the pumpkin? Where's fairy godmothers? Where are, like, sure. the, where are the animals? Mm -hmm. I feel like people probably were disappointed, but your teenagers were probably like, oh, yeah. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. Especially late 90s. So... So to jump into, you kind of hit on like one of my first points. This was not geared towards kids. This came out in the theaters. It was PG-13 mm. when it first aired. Why? Because it had some curse words in it. Now, when they went to VHS, <sighs> they decided that they wanted to make it so that more parents would buy it for their kids. Uh -huh. So they removed, I think, three curse words so that way they could be PG rating. Do you remember what they were? No, I have no idea. I don't even know which version we watched today. I think we watched, I don't know what version we watched. We watched it in HD. We watched it in HD. We know that. We paid the extra dollar. It's worth it. I don't usually it's say it. It's worth the extra dollar, folks. It was worth it today. I paid four bucks for it. It's good. So the first time that I saw this movie was on VHS. I got this VHS for my birthday. So this was not a grandma, go to grandma's house and watch no. VHSs. This is like, Rach, you deserve to own this one. This was... You had four movies, and this is one of this them. This was one of them. This is why this is so pivotal for me. My Aunt Barb, for my birthday, bought me this VHS. I remember it like as yesterday, because this was like my first, my first video. Mm -hmm. And a little candle that went with it, and it was the scent of honeysuckle. And I'll be honest, <laughs> I have never felt more like an adult than I did at that 12th birthday. Like, that just felt... And so you were really happy with that. Yeah. Okay, so... Oh, I was fantastic. It was, like, my first, like, grown-up, like, I'm a young woman, here's your present, here's a movie and a candle. Like, I would love that today. Did that you, would be a fantastic gift. Did you ever have moments where you got gifts that were supposed to be grown-up presents and you were super disappointed? <laughs> like, Trev and I both yeah. went it through it when we would get, like, a really nice sweater. And I'd be like, a sweater for Christmas? <laughs> Are you kidding me, Grandma? I don't <laughs> want this. <laughs> you're like my little brat. And brother. you're like a little brat. And then you wear the sweater all the time. Yeah. But, like, it, it just feels like, I don't want a sweater. Where are the toys? <laughs> yep. Close. That's what Zach would say. He'd be like, oh, close. Clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Poor kid. Did you ever have those moments though? Um, yeah, I probably. Um, there was around this time too. I don't remember what year it was. Like probably for Christmas or something. Um, one of my uncles got me a really great history book called Her Story. Uh huh. And yep. like now it's like it's a fantastic book and it's really lovely. But I think at the time I was kind of like, ah, book. <laughs> <laughs> That tells you what kind of kid I was. Yeah. <laughs> but it was a lovely gift. Ah, <laughs> oh, reading. Come on. I got to do that all day. Yeah. <laughs> well, you only read like three words per minute, so. <laughs> whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm just kidding. We're both slow readers, actually. Did you ever have a gift that like you knew like this is, I'm becoming an adult. Like when you stopped asking for toys and when you started getting things that like adults would maybe get. Um, yeah, but it was shamefully late. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually unsurprisingly when we last started year. dating <laughs> you and, and me yeah <laughs> oh. and your parents were like what does ty want for christmas i was like okay i can't ask for video games from your parents <laughs> like it's just so lame it's like this kid needs to grow up he's in grad school right now what are we doing here i'm not gonna buy you a video game you little nerd <laughs> Like, grow up. That's what you And thought. so part of me was like, I got to start asking for big boy presents. Wow. And so I did. And I've kind of always, and then from then on forward, like, if I want, like, something that's kind of childish, I'll ask from my from, from my parents. <laughs> but I'll ask for legit stuff, including this microphone we're talking on right now and all the mic equipment. All the podcast all stuff. All from your parents for Christmas presents. That's true. We have we have built our Summers Off empire yep. one Christmas present at a time. <laughs> <laughs> always thought, it seems like a good thing to ask for for, for oh, Christmas. Oh, that's a wonderful thing to ask for for Christmas. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, well, let's get into the film just a little bit here. Yeah. Not a lot. We won't have yeah. to if we don't want to. <laughs> I thought it was great. I enjoyed myself. <laughs> um, so the director's name, Andy Tennant. Hey, um, a couple of other famous movies, super famous movies oh, that wow. he's directed. Um, Fool's Gold. Do you remember that with Kate Hudson and no, Matthew McConaughey? I Fools Rush In. <gasps> That's also his. He Both of them have yeah. fools in the title? <laughs> they sure do. <laughs> See, I don't remember Fool's Gold at all. But That's Fool's so Rush random. In, I like that movie as like a middle schooler. Yeah? I thought it was really I've fun. I've never seen it, but I'm glad I had it here. Chandler and Selma Hayek. Oh, yeah. that's okay. Yep, I know of it. Um, Hitch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which is entertaining, I sure. think. Sure, yeah. Um, Sweet Home Alabama. I've never seen also it. Also his, yep. I think you would think that one was whatever. And then the classic comedy duo, It Takes Two, with the Olsen twins. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So, quite the rep. Yeah, he's got the wild filmography. <laughs> has he been nominated for an Oscar? Because I'd be shocked if he has You know, not the Oscar, but early in his oh, career. Oh, God. Was, critics' Choice are no. like, you got <laughs> no. a Golden Globe. But he got a Globe. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, early in his career, he was a dancer, and he danced in movies like Grease and Grease 2. <laughs> So and then he, he was decided in both he was in both greases. And then he decided that maybe I want to not do this anymore. Mm-hmm. Ty, do you have a favorite song from Greece too? We're gonna score tonight. <laughs> no, Reproduction. I asked for I like one. That one. I too. just asked no, for I one. Like two. I don't need Those the whole the category, just one. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see this, podcasters, but I'm coming in so slow for a kiss right now. So slow. And now we're finally. <laughs> About oh, you're right in my ears. Kiss. Is that how slow it is in the <laughs> in the movie? Yeah, it's so slow. It's terrific. With Michelle Pfeiffer. Yep. Yeah, uh-huh. that's so great. <laughs> <laughs> so casting for this, our prince, uh, Duggery. I didn't, Duggery? Duggery? I didn't know Duggery him at Scott. all. Well, so he hadn't done really anything much before this. Yeah. Um, he went on after this to be the main villain in Mission Impossible 2. Okay. That's the one that I don't that really one. remember very yeah. well, number two. He was also considered for um, Wolverine. Oh, okay. And considered for James Bond when they had Pierce Brosnan. So yep. after this, he had a couple of close calls, but not a ton of big roles. Sure. But I like him, though. I think he, I I think think he's he was a good really actor. good. Yep, yeah. he is good. Now, here's one thing that I thought was really miraculous. Sure. So, in the towards two thirds of the way through the film, it starts to rain really, really hard, mm. and <laughs> Drew Barrymore is running away from the ball when she gets like exposed or whatever, mm-hmm. and she's just dripping wet. Her hair is like soaked. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, it cuts to him, and he's standing on like a like a little parapet or something, like a mm-hmm. like a. I don't know, like yeah. on the edge of the castle, mm-hmm. and he's just staring up at the sky while it's raining, and. He, I, it's one of those things that you're like, it's either fake rain or they've like positioned the rain to be right in front of him because his hair stays immaculate. Oh, it never no. gets wet. His hair stays perfectly curled. Sure. He just has this voluminous hair that does not get touched by water. <laughs> so it's like a real cool magic power. So there was magic in this movie. There was a little bit of magic in this movie. <laughs> so we said earlier, so Drew Barrymore was 23 when she did this. Mm-hmm. This is one of her favorite roles. Yeah. Can you imagine why this would be one of her favorite Because you could play roles? princess. Well, not just any princess, though. Like, let's talk about this character, this interpretation of Cinderella. Uh-huh. She saves herself. She, like, essentially rescues herself. She doesn't need... Oh, yeah. She doesn't need somebody to come in. She's self-sufficient. Mm-hmm. She's smart. She, um, she's witty. She's caring. Like... She's got all these things. And so Drew is quoted as saying, that's who I want to be. That's just who I want to be in this life. So she loved this role. Mm-hmm. This is one of her faves. Do you have a favorite role that you've ever acted in? or? Oh, yeah. Or you know what they are. You could name them. I want you to name them. In order. <sighs> well, I don't know about in order. Well, then I so can't So right either. now, we're doing Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Mm-hmm. That's quickly climbing like into that top little echelon already. Sure. So like, I would already say Brick and Cat on a Hot Tin Roof is up there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's because you want to be like him? Yeah, I just I want to be just like him. I want to drink whiskey all day. I want to get super wasted. I don't think be you very have mopey. any characters that you want to oh, be just like. Oh, is that what you're asking? No, I'm not asking oh, that. I was just that's thinking it's funny story. because you you just like the the tortured souls. I do. <laughs> yep. Biff Hamlet. in Death of a Salesman was awesome. Tom and Glass Menagerie. Mm-hmm. Romeo and Romeo and Juliet, <laughs> like those are my favorite roles I've ever got to do, and like those are so that you're right, they're so like torture, oh, torture, my life sucks. And you're right, Hamlet's my dream role. I'm like, no, <laughs> life sucks. I'm me. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, awesome. Um, did you have just in this movie, did you have somebody who stood out to you who you really enjoyed? I honestly liked just about everybody. Yeah, I thought the acting across the board was super strong. <laughs> it Even is. for like the smaller bit lo- roles, like I thought both of the stepsisters were pretty flushed out. Yep, I thought I they did were too. fun. I did too. Um, you have like kind of like a you have a really attractive stepsister. Yeah. Usually they have them kind of be ugly, but I really liked it. That one was too. just more just physically very beautiful, but mm-hmm. like just cruel and mean. Yep. And and so we kind of played with like that theme. Like it's not just about. It being was beautiful. actually so. I mean, not to get too far into this right now, but no, like do it. They actually made her more irredeemable than the stepmom. Yeah. So the stepmom, yeah. yeah. so here's one thing that's so Played cool about Angelica this movie. Angelica Houston. Angelica Houston, oh. who does a great job. Isn't she great? She is excellent. Kate yeah. Blanchett, who is, everybody would say is a better actress, right? Sure. And the, and the, the Lily whole, James one. On the whole. And the Lily James one, Kate Blanchett annoyed the piss out of me. Oh, yeah? She is just too over the top, annoying and like evil and stuff. She's just, it's, it's not her fault. It's how the character's written. Sure. But in this version, they actually infuse the stepmom mm-hmm. with like likable qualities. Mm-hmm. And there's moments where like you can tell why she shifts against Drew Barrymore, mm-hmm. including yeah. when her dad dies. Yeah. And her dad looks at Angelica Houston and he puts his hand up and she's crying. I thought, by the way, at the beginning, I was like, oh, the stepmom poisoned him. Oh. But then there's no proof of nope. that. And you're just supposed to assume like, no, that was just a random thing that happened. Yeah. Yep. And that this sad. sad, this sad circumstance mm-hmm. ruined their relationship forever. Mm-hmm. And that then, then this moment where he's dying, he looks up at Angelica Houston and his hand raises up and you think he's going to like go to her. Mm-hmm. But then he shifts his focus and he looks at Drew Barrymore as a little girl. Mm-hmm. And then he says, I love you. And like, tries to hold on to her mm-hmm. and so he makes a choice in that moment mm-hmm. that then the stepmom angela houston who's doing a great job of like crying her mm-hmm. eyes out she looks awesome yeah and then <laughs> she you see the choice like right in that moment like mm-hmm. you chose her like yeah. i love you and you chose her yeah. and then they do all kinds of things where like she says you look just like your father mm-hmm. and you can to drew barrymore later in the movie and you're like oh that's a sweet thing and then you can tell she catches herself because she doesn't want to be too nice exactly. so then she turns it around she's like yeah yeah, you. No wonder you're such a worker, and yeah, like you have you, such ma- male, male features. Yeah, male features or <laughs> like whatever. She takes so it's back. like she had to like turn it on mm-hmm. its head because she had like been too vulnerable in that moment. I just thought, let me just. I'm gonna be right up front. It was very clever, and yeah. some of those moments made the movie. Those little things mm-hmm. that like were justifying why characters do what they do. Yeah. Yeah, and exactly. it was very well fleshed out. Yes. And I think that's so important for villains to be fleshed out. Mm-hmm. They have to you have to see a little bit of the humanity and the reasons like why they do what they do. Yep. I'll be honest, so that scene that you're talking about with the dad dying, it's like the first like 2 minutes of the film. Uh-huh. I like had my eye watching you cuz I was like he's going to like this and this is how I know I've got him. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. I, was I like, did. All right. Good. I've got you. Yep. <laughs> you were I was like, "Ty, stop See, taking notes." <laughs> how come you can't do that when you're watching Starship Troopers? You know, you're like, "Oh, the the bug Starship the, Troopers. the comets hit and they're all going to sign up for the military or whatever and it's like, "Yeah, I got her." That's the moment. It's when the bug comments <laughs> hit, and the only good bug is a dead bug. <laughs> well, what I'll say is, is that I probably need to rewatch it with some fresh eyes because, again, I didn't think it was a smart enough movie. Like it knew what it was doing. Yeah. I think now, if I would watch it, I would like pick up more on the like, oh, we're intentionally being propaganda and glorifying mm-hmm. war. At the time, I just it just seemed like war was still so cool, <laughs> and I think that message was probably lost on a lot of people who like that movie. To no, be perfectly sure. honest, yeah. I don't know that everybody comes in like understanding like hey war's bad you know? <laughs> by the way this is this is not cool yep. i know it seemed like it was really cool but it wasn't <laughs> <So true. laughs> there's a lot of yep. like uh, jar heads that are like oh, i love that movie <laughs> yeah hoorah <laughs> <laughs> what were you gonna say them well i was just gonna go back to so angelica houston too let's go back to I angelica like houston i have more she, to say about her she has i understand why she keeps turning against drew barrymore too because yeah. drew barrymore her character, the Cinder Girl, yes, little Cinder she girl. she hides things from her too, mm-hmm. and she kind of like doesn't allow 
She doesn't like trust her stepmom mm-hmm. and she never opens up to her stepmom about things. And so there just seems like they're both kind of making bad choices to further that like gulf that's between them. Mm-hmm. And instead of closing that chasm, they they keep making actions that widen it. Mm-hmm. And so like Drew Barrymore meets the king, but then she doesn't say anything to the stepmom. Like, you know, she should have probably went to her and been like, hey, the, or the prince. Mm-hmm. The prince was here. Like, I ran... The prince took our horse. He might be coming back for it or whatever. Sure. And so there are, like, things that she felt like she was playing against her. Mm-hmm. I just... I understood her character way more than I ever have in any other, like, telling of this story. Sure. Yeah. You are the only mother I have ever known. Was there a time, even in its smallest measurement, that you loved me at all? How can anyone love a pebble in their shoe? So Angelica Houston, like Drew Barrymore, is a third generation actor. She kind of comes mm-hmm. from a, just a long line lineage of actors and actresses. Um, one of my favorite things about looking up stuff for this is people talked about one, how fantastic she is in this role. Mm-hmm. And then also a second comma note about how awesome her eyebrows are. <laughs> they are. I mean, she has very striking She's, features. Oh You're like, my. whoa. Yeah. Yeah. She can hold your attention. Yeah. And those eyebrows, man, they don't quit. Yeah. They don't it's, quit. It's, there's a lot of truth to that. Yes, absolutely. So she was awarded for this, or nominated, I should say, the Fox Teens Choice Award, <laughs> Choice Sleaze Bag. It was the first year that they did this. She was nominated, but she lost that year because of our gal, Sarah Michelle Gellar for Cruel Intentions. Oh, which Sarah Michelle and Cruel Intentions is phenomenal. Choice she should have bag as she well. She should have been able to beat Angelica <laughs> Houston in that, but those are two really riveting performances. Absolutely. Dueling. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> that was later renamed Choice Villain. <laughs> they both should have probably been up for Best Supporting Actress at the Oscars that year. At the Oscars that year? I don't know. I don't know who else was up there. <laughs> wow. That's fun. They both just did a good job. <laughs> I liked both those take. performances. <laughs> um, another villain in it that I just want to touch on really quick, mm-hmm. the character Pierre Le Pew. <laughs> Which one was Pierre? He... Is he the guard guy who I... The guard guy. Like he's like whispering in Angelica Houston's ear all the time. He gives no, her the necklace. No, not the not the little minion oh, that okay. she flirts with to get favors yep. from. No, an infor- inside information from the pals. No, this was the guy who is kind of financially supporting the farm, and he keeps oh. like making passes yeah. at Drew Barrymore's character, and he's kind of older, and he's like. You know, I, I assumed he was like a duke or a baron. Yeah, or something. something like that. Yep. Basically, he wants, wants yeah, her land. to marry him, but he's kind of disgusting. So mm-hmm. it's, we're gonna just spoil it a little bit. At the end, she gets sold to him yep. essentially, and then she ends up being a badass and freeing herself uh-huh. with swords because she's an expert swordswoman, which is also awesome. That is cool. But did you um, recognize him from any other? Things? I didn't. Okay. His teeth. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know they grossed them I'm up on purpose, sure. but like I those hope. teeth were gnarly. Yeah. You got like little rat teeth, and then they yeah. were all like stained yellow yeah. and brown. It was uh-huh. nasty. Well, his name is Richard O'Brien. Wait, I know that name. Wow, that was fast. Wait, did Richard O'Brien? Okay, this is a real shot in the dark. Okay, you're in. A... I might not know it, so try. There's one famous thing that I'm going to tell you about. Rocky Horror? Yes. Richard you O'Brien got wrote it. it, right? Yes. yes. And he was actually in it too. He played Riff Raff He's in the Riff Raff. film. He's Riff Raff. Yes. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> I'm so impressed. <laughs> I didn't even have to do any hard work or hands. You just got yeah, it. Yeah. I was just, I know that name. I can see it on my script, like my old script. Like, <laughs> back you? when I, because I slept with that script. You know, it's like one of those oh, that you sure. <laughs> have forever as you're memorizing and stuff. So, yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Yeah, Brad cool. and Rocky Horror, another super fun role that I loved. <laughs> I love playing Brad. Yeah, it was a great role. Yep. <laughs> Very good. Um, any other performances that you liked? Are there any other actors or actresses you want to talk about or people you want to shout um, out to? I I mean, I thought that the... I, I thought everybody just did a pretty good mm-hmm. job. Like Nobody stands out as far as, like, this person was amazing. No, Angelica but... Houston's that person for me who is like, mm-hmm. oh, my gosh, that was awesome. Yeah. But mm-hmm. everybody else, I thought, played their parts really well. Mm-hmm. I like the king and queen. I like their dynamic. Yeah, they I do, too. They were kind of fun. Yep. And I like the queen a lot. I mm-hmm. thought the queen was especially good. Yeah. She was super grounded. Yep. She was very good. And I don't know. I just thought, like, there was a lot of great turns from... Almost everybody. Like, I can't really... If you even ask me, who do you think did a bad job? Mm -hmm. I don't even know if I could name anybody who did a bad job. Yeah. That was strong all across the board. You should all be proud of yourselves. (laughs) Bravo. What did you think about their replacement of, as the fairy godmother, instead we have famous historical figure, 
Leonardo da Vinci is in this movie. Yep, what? yep. Leonardo da Vinci comes yeah. in, and he like he also is pretty much the advisor to the prince as well, mm-hmm. and kind of yep. plays a little bit of a mentor to him as mm-hmm. well. He's like his Aristotle, he and um, yeah, I thought it was cool. Mm-hmm. I liked it. We'll get into the historical part of it, but uh, <laughs> I thought that it was. I thought it was a cool, interesting choice, mm-hmm. and I, I liked his little jab at Michelangelo stuck under a ceiling, and <laughs> I'm bringing the Mona Lisa to France, which we can get it in this right now. He actually did to the right. court of Francis, but it was That's not real. on paper. It's actually on wood. Did yeah, you know that I did not. Well, you've seen I that. I thought you it know looked that. too big. It is. It I don't know. Way, I don't know that it is. It looked way bigger when he unfurled it than it <laughs> does know. at the, the Louvre. And I was really like, it's, tiny. it's pretty small, bro. That well, seems way big. That doesn't seem right, which is silly because you guys can go to the Louvre to see <laughs> yeah. how big that is, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, did you know that in 2018, they were in pre-productions to start planning a biopic for Leonardo da Vinci, like a biopic movie? Ooh. Which would be kind of interesting. Who was going to play him, do you know? I would love you to guess it. He's going to play Leonardo da Vinci? Yeah, I remember that this Leonardo is- Leonardo DiCaprio. Yes. No way. Yes way. Yes way. Must act harder. <laughs> I just had to throw that in there because I knew you would love that little tidbit. Now, things are still in pre-productions for it, so nothing has begun filming yet, but- Well, yes. everybody knows my yes. hot takes on Leo. <laughs> I have been too hard on him in the past. Like, once upon a time in Hollywood, he did a really nice job. So, it could be really good. It could be. Could be really good. Or not. Or it could not be really good. <laughs> or it could be hot garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I could think Matt Damon should have played this role. We, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, let's talk about a couple of scenes. Mm-hmm. I have a few favorite scenes in this. One of them, obviously, for me, is the iconic ballroom scene. Sure. So, it's a masquerade ball. Not the prom. Old tie, it was not prom. This past. is straight up France ball 15, it's like, 15. It's kind of like France prom, though. France prom, yeah. Essentially like France prom. So at the prom, France <laughs> prom, um, the prince has to make the announcement at midnight. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is kind of his his charge. Um, so in the original script, they had it that da Vinci was going to paint on a mask onto Cinderella. Or not Cinderella. Danielle is the character mm-hmm. on Drew Barrymore. Um, the makeup artist was super nervous about this because she's like, oh, great. So I have to put something on your face that can be considered like done by like Leonardo da Vinci. Like no pressure there. Oh, like that'll yeah. be really easy. Sure. They later decided to go with body glitter. <laughs> As you saw, Dude, she was so sparkly. That is probably a mi- <laughs> one of the biggest missteps in the movie, I thought. You say that, is but this silly glitter 1998. that she's wearing. 1998, glitter was everything. And it almost looked like there were rhinestones implanted in her skin. There like, were. She had like little stickies. Little gem things. Yeah, for sure. And I thought that oh. was so silly. No, it's so cool. No, it was so not cool. cool. Like, she already looks awesome. She's got the fairy wings. She's got this yep. beautiful Leonardo dress on. ends up making her fairy wings instead. Drew Barrymore orange. is in primo condition. Mm-hmm. Like, she is just mm-hmm. like meant for this time period yep. of this 100%. like Tudor time period. It looks awesome. And then she comes out, and she's got this stupid sparkly makeup on and these rhinestones embedded in her skin. And I thought, what the hell are we doing right now? This is stupid. Oh, my gosh. I disagree. I thought it was fantastic. She is stunning. I loved all the glitter. She looked like a 13-year-old girl. Which is why I resonated so well with this. I was like, yes. I too will put glitter everywhere. Yeah. I feel like before this, it would have they would have said, what was her character's name? Danielle. Danielle. Danielle, get out of Claire's. You got to get out of Claire's. We're going to go take you to the actual. I'm covered in glitter. <laughs> the actual makeup store. You're not going to buy anything at Claire's anymore. Does Claire's even have makeup? I don't even know. Uh, Glitter makeup, probably. Yeah, I bet yeah, they do. Like the basic glittery stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of the costumes? I liked them. Oh, the I thought they were really, really good. good. Yeah. I, yeah. I like, I was even, I always kind of look for inaccuracies. And sure. obviously, I'm not a costume guru. Never will pretend to be. Mm-hmm. But I look at the weaponry, though. And, yeah. like, the weaponry all seemed to be really legit. Mm-hmm. Um, the costumer was um, an uh, Oscar Award win- Oscar, an Academy Award winner for mm-hmm. Mad Max Fury Road. Oh, shoot. Yeah. So, pretty, awesome. pretty sweet res. Hey, which, by the way, we went back and reviewed all the films that were up for an Oscar that year. Which year? That was the Spotlight Mad year. Max, Spotlight, yeah. Brooklyn. Oh, yeah. That mm-hmm. was a weak year. It was kind and of a Mad weaker Max, year, wasn't it? I think, was the best film of that year. Like <laughs> the fact it didn't win is kind of crazy time. because I don't know if any of those other films should have been that. That was a weak year. <laughs> it was... It's like Shape of Water year was also a weak year. I mm. thought. Oh, so many takes. I know. Hot. 
Um, tell me about, or do you have a scene that you like or a scene that you want to talk about from the film? Um, so, I mean, I don't know. Nothing really is like sticking out as far as like, I want to make sure I talk about this. Mm -hmm. I thought that like the, the deal with the apples was kind of cute for their introductory meeting or whatever. Yeah, she tosses. that a little bit. So he's stealing, the prince is trying to run away from home. Yeah. He doesn't want to get married to the Spanish princess. Mm -hmm. And... So he's running away from home and he comes, he steals her horse because I think something happens to his horse. Yep. And he steals her dad's horse, Drew Barrymore's dad's horse. Mm -hmm. And he's riding through this field and she sees him. She thinks he's just a robber. Mm -hmm. So she picks up all these apples that she's been picking for their mm -hmm. breakfast for his, her stepsisters and stepmom. And she wings them right at his face and she <laughs> nails him in the head and he falls off the horse and she keeps na so nailing right. him with these apples. Yep. And then she realizes he's the king, prince and then she like feels really bad about it. Mm -hmm. I just thought... It was a clever way to show things. Mm -hmm. And I also liked all the scenes between them where she didn't take any shit from him. No. She was like, even mm -hmm. though she was pretending to be a noble, even even with that, there still is like decorum there where mm -hmm. like she should have been very subservient to him. Yeah. And she wasn't because she didn't have anything to lose because she's really just a servant. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I thought that was really cool because mm -hmm. that entranced him in a way. Yeah, because you know, she like, challenged him. He's like, no one talks to me like this. Yep. Like, who are you? Tell me more. Who are, You're quoting all of this, like, philosophy. Who are you? Mm -hmm. Which I loved because, like, the relationship was built on this, like, compatibility and this mm -hmm. intrigue and not just, like, a love at first sight mentality. Yep. You spout the ideals of a utopian society and yet you live the life of a courtier. And you own all the land there is, and yet you take no pride in working it. Is that not also a contradiction? Well, first I'm arrogant, and now I have no pride. However do I manage that? You have everything, and still the world holds no joy. And yet you insist on making fun of those who would see it for its possibilities. How do you do it? What? Live each day with this kind of passion. Don't you find it exhausting? Only when I'm around you. Why do you like to irritate me so? Why do you rise to the occasion? I thought, fantastic. <laughs> it's fantastic. So all their scenes are pretty fun. Yeah, and you can see that chemistry. romance growing mm -hmm. and things. And I like that they didn't pretend like the prince wasn't attracted to the other stepsister too. Oh, yeah. Because she's hot. And so like when he's For like, sure. oh, she's wearing a brooch right by her boobies. Like <laughs> I, It's like one of those things you're like, oh, I get why he's like really into this chick too. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. He just doesn't realize she's such an asshole. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't know all the sides of her. He just <laughs> thinks that she's just boring. Yeah. Pretty and boring. Um, so one of my favorite scenes is when Danielle and Henry, so the prince and Cinderella, are in the woods and they get accosted by a band of gypsies. Mm -hmm. And there's a fight that breaks out and Danielle's character ends up like kind of like pushing them off and saying like, I demand a horse. I you, like you will give me a horse and I because you were taking my escort and like they kind of just laugh at her and then the the leader of the group is like you ma'am you can take whatever you can carry and she goes over and she picks up the prince on her shoulders does a little curtsy <laughs> and, and walks away it's very and then cute. the gypsies like laugh they're like okay just kidding come on back and then they party and then they party they party that night and then and have he a becomes great friends with the gypsies <laughs> and everything which is awesome because you're like I want to be friends with the gypsies yeah they're and he invites cool. him to the ball he invites yep. him to prom which is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, so historically, something similar happened in 1140 in Bavaria. Okay. After a battle of the town called Weinsberg, don't know where that is, but it was placed under siege, and King Conrad the Third. I don't okay. know if you know who that is. Um, there are a few Conrads. Sure. <laughs> well, this is the third of them. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Um, he told the women of the town that was under siege that they could leave with whatever they could carry. And so the wives came out with their husbands on their backs, and he laughed, apparently. He laughed about it, and he said, all right, well, a king should always stand by his word, and he allowed it to happen. That's clever. Isn't that kind of cool? But what about their kids? Yeah. <laughs> they were all merciless. Oh, God, I don't know about <laughs> What about all the puppies? Oh, no. Gosh. Oh, that's really sad. Yeah, something to think about. <laughs> I'm thinking about it now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um... Let me think of what else to ask you here before I allow you to get into historical inaccuracies. <laughs> Would you like to just get into historical inaccuracies? Are you ready for that? Or um, do you want to talk about Brothers Grimm for a little bit? Uh, let's talk about Brothers Grimm. What do you think about their cameo in this? 
I mean, just that there were brothers, two guys who were playing they the were brothers Grimm. Yeah. Oh, the real bro- those were the real brothers Grimm those guys. Those were the real brothers Grimm guys. You know, I don't even know when not those guys. Not Ledger and not whoever else. I was never it. saw that movie. Who was he? Matt Damon. Matt was Damon. It? Yeah. yeah, I didn't either. So yeah. I have no idea what it's about. <laughs> and I don't even know when those two like wrote all their tales. Mm-hmm. Did you have that? In- I'm sure it was right around this that time. Yeah, I'm sure it's this. very accurate. It was well, like, not 1515 because this is in this the future. Is, she says and her she's, great-great-grandmother. Yeah, which I think the setup of the story is really fascinating too. So this older you know, duchess or somebody calls the Brothers Grimm mm-hmm. to her palace and is like, I want to tell you about the story that you have. You've got it all wrong. Let me tell you what really happened. Do you know the story of the... Sintachau. She's <laughs> not German, but she does have a very unique, scratchy old oh, voice. Oh, yeah, and it's it's not as bad in the first scene, but her last voiceover, she's there, like, this guy, like, she's been smoking a pack a day. Yeah. It's like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> the fact is, gentlemen, they lived. <laughs> yep, something like, something wow. like that. <laughs> well, so in the real Cinderella story, there's kind of a gruesome ending at the very end of it. Do you know anything about the real Cinderella All story? All I know is that like the stepsisters, I think one of them chops off half their foot to try to fit into that shoe. They're f- they do mutilate their feet yep. to fit into the shoe. I That's don't know if I it. know anything else about it, though. So there's a couple of different versions of it, but in one of them, the stepsisters get their eyes plucked out by doves. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, how, why did the doves do that? Well, and here's the weird part. They're bridesmaids at the wedding of Cinderella, and then one of the doves comes down, and it plucks one of the eyes out, and then after the ceremony, they're walking back out, and then the doves pluck the other eye out. I think I read that right. <laughs> weird. What's with these doves? It's punishment. It's punishment because they're from bad. the gods? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. So the movie ending actually kind of alludes to this a little bit. Can you think of what the punishment is and how that might They have tie? to be servants. Yes, the they ste- have to one become... of the stepmothers, one, was... of the, one of the stepdaughters and the stepmother. One of yep. them gets off scot-free because she's cool. Because one of them's really cool She's nice fun. And... She's cool. She's yep. just here for the food. Yep. <laughs> I love she's her sweet. character. She's, she's funny. And then they are down in the servant or whatever and mm-hmm. there's an old lady showing them around and she's like trying to teach them how they're mm-hmm. going to do everything and the stepmom obviously doesn't and they get in a fight and then she knocks her into a bunch of water yeah so they're yeah they're doing laundry and so this was something that was planned um historically people who spent a lot of time around those chemicals uh-huh. in the laundry could go blind from oh. them so it was actually a shout out to the OG <laughs> OG <laughs> We didn't pluck their eyes out, but we will make them go blind. In the laundry room, they should have had a little window and some doves should have been sitting there. Be like, <laughs> Just watching. What's going to happen to those doves? We should probably watch it. There might be some. We'll yeah, look for those might be a deleted little symbols. <laughs> um, out of the Cinderella movies, what's your favorite adaptation? I'll give you a couple. So there's a Disney, yeah, cart- there's a Disney cartoon. <laughs> okay. There's Brandy's Rogers and Hammerstein. I hate that one. What? I think that's it's fine. That's fair. Awful. That's, I don't like Rodgers and Hammerstein and Cinderella, number one. Oh. But I also think Brandy is atrocious in that. <gasps> she is horrible as an actress. Gosh. Hey, what's going on over here? Oh, my. What's even happening? <laughs> okay. Oh, my gosh. Okay. That was actually pretty accurate. But, <laughs> oh, I can't believe that. That's like my childhood. I mean, Whitney Houston sounds awesome. Oh, Wit. Wit Wat. Um... So then there's the Lily James one that came out recently, yep. that one. And then there's, you haven't seen it, but the Hilary Duff one, a Cinderella story. And then there's this one. Do you have a, this is my favorite. This one's the best. This one's the best. I'm not a huge, even Disney Cinderella fan. Yeah. Like, even when I was a kid, that was low on my totem pole. Sure. Like, I would watch it on occasion. But I was I was probably even more into Snow White than I was into Cinderella. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought sleeping. <laughs> is that because that was your nickname? How dare you? I'm just asking the questions. Was it or was it not? It was my nickname, and you know that. <laughs> Is that why you liked it? They, that was in middle school. That was even later, though. That was, or no, that was kind of into the grade school. But yeah, it was embarrassing. I'm and the, sorry. And the chick who her and her friends told me that, I had a huge crush on her. <sighs> she was probably flirting with you. Yeah, she's two years older than me, though. She was way cooler. <laughs> so, I don't think so. <laughs> For sure. So after this one, which one would you say would be your next one? Um, probably then the Disney one though the the Lily James live no, action no 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 oh the Disney Lily cartoon James, I think the Lily James one is bad you don't like that one I either? think Lily James is good in it sure and she's very hot <laughs> but I think that that movie is not good yeah yep and that movie has like I, I might have to confirm this but I think it's like over ninety percent on Rotten Tomatoes it's crazy I'm like that movie oh, is it sucks. that high yeah oh 
I didn't think about that. Yeah, for me, it would go Ever After, and then the cartoon. Yep. And then I don't remember the Lily James one because because it was bad. Well, I'm kind of thinking that I really like Brandy. Oh, <laughs> I just so fun. Bernadette Peters is in oh, it. Man, what's even happening over here? <laughs> okay, oh, not wow. specific Brandy, but I do enjoy it. It was fun. It was a good time. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen that Rodgers and Hammerstein one? Besides that, though. They have a lot of versions of it. When I was looking up there, they is do. a Julie Andrews version. Yep. There's one that's done in the 50s. I don't know that woman, but yeah, I just think it's so boring many. and lame. Like for Rodgers and Ham, I'm yeah. bored out of my gourd in that one. <laughs> it's like Sound of Music. We were just saw Sound of Music the other day. I was like, oh, oh, it was after we watched Hamilton. Hamilton, by the way, awesome. Everybody watch it oh, right now. It was wonderful. So it good. It really was. But then the next thing up was Sound of Music, and I was like, ugh. Oh, like sound of music the worst no it's not the worst so boring so boring. you say that what if you got to play the main von trapp guy wouldn't I've, that be cool i've already been air zeller no not him <laughs> if you aren't him like playing a nazi soldier is not the same as I'll playing honest, monsieur von trapp i mean trap would be it but awesome. besides trap i don't want to play anything on that i well, never yeah. want to be rolf i could care less about rolf he's a loser <laughs> <laughs> His song is lame. I am 16 going on 17. Yeah, I lame love that song. song. Boring, lame. Rolf's a loser. <laughs> a great little sound bite. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Well, I'm going to give it to you for a couple of minutes. And okay. I'm probably going to put you on a timer here. This is your All chance right. to try to make history fun for everybody. Okay. Why don't you tell us, Ty? Maybe what were some things that couldn't have happened sure. or people who maybe didn't exist at the certain time yeah. that this movie says that they did? Historical fiction. Go mm-hmm. ahead. So here's the problem. <laughs> there is – I was trying to find a time that this possibly could have happened, and there's no way because everything – it's like you you mixed all these elements that have concrete dates, mm-hmm. and they, there's like a hurricane would have to hit the page, and everything would be have to be flipped around. Sure. So Francis – who is the father? He's the king. Yes. Francis the first was king in fifteen fifteen. Now we said that that was maybe when he was. This mm-hmm. movie takes place. Mm-hmm. He would have been twenty one years old. Yes. And he looks That's like he's problem. like he's eighty years old. He looks like he's, he's about ready old. to croak. He is. And his son needs to marry and start having kids because he's gonna pass on soon. Yes. So that's problem number one is that he was supposed to be way younger. Um, and then Henry, his son, mm-hmm. he's not born until 1519. Yep. So he's born like four years after this movie was supposedly kind of takes place, which is a huge problem. And then they allude to, which this is really funny. They talk about divorce. They're like, you don't want to get a divorce. Divorces are for England. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was a really fun pot shot. But here's the problem. Uh-oh. Henry the eighth oh. never got divorced until 1528. And so oh. if that was the case then your timeline's all messed up sure. because Leonardo da Vinci died in 1519. Oh. So you can't have divorce. You can't have oh. little Henry. He would have been like four years old when Leonardo died. <laughs> he he drew the Mona Lisa in like 1505-ish, somewhere or in the early 1500s. We don't really know when, mm-hmm. but we assume. And so he would have he brought that to the court of France almost mm-hmm. immediately. Mm-hmm. And so that was way earlier than that. And Francis wasn't even the king then. And so what is going on here? <laughs> and then you have the book Utopia, which they allude to all the time. It's Drew Barrymore's you caught favorite. You that one. I didn't think you were going to catch it. How it's you... her favorite book. It is. She re- for instance, ugh, references it all the time. Yep. It was left by her father. Mm-hmm. It's her last like memory of him. Very important. And Utopia was written in... 1516. Mm-hmm. So if this movie takes place in 1515, Utopia is not even around. Much less was it around enough for her dad to read it and fall in love with it, and then him to die, and then her to like inherit it and still love it. It just doesn't make any sense in the timeline. Wow. Um, and another thing, how come Paris looks like it's a town of like 300 people? <laughs> Whenever they ride through it, they he always can find her. He stumbles into her all the time, like it's like a to- a small I town, know. like it's St. Peter in Minnesota, <laughs> and like he's like, oh hey, there she is again as she he rides around on his horse. Right? Wouldn't they be at Versailles, the king in the Versailles queen? wasn't around yet. Okay, Versailles so... comes around Louis the Fourteenth. Yeah, I don't know. So that's know in then. the they were they would be at the Palais de Royal. Which oh yeah would we be, saw that yeah which would be like on the suburb yeah it's like in the outskirts a little bit mm-hmm. but I just don't get if she lives on a, in a rural place and she comes into town mm-hmm. it looks like such a small town it's 
150,000 people at the time of 1500. Wow. So that wouldn't have made any sense wow. as far as that with the population. And then here's <laughs> and another then, kicker. And then rock, paper, scissors. <gasps> How did you catch that one? Rock, paper, scissors. See, I know all of these, but I'm just fascinated that you are you caught them <laughs> on your own. I had someone telling me that. Rock, paper, scissors yes. came about mm-hmm. in like the 1700s. It was in China before that, yep. but it never left China. And it actually only went to Japan after that. And it didn't find its way to Europe until much later. So them doing rock, paper, scissors yeah, makes no sense. Yeah, her and her no dad sense. play rock, paper, scissors And then the he, she does it with the king, yeah. uh, the prince. Mm-hmm. She teaches him how to play rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. But that's kind of a cute scene because it's like, if I beat you, then you have to tell me something. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's so cute. I love beginning flirting like that. <laughs> Let's play a game. Oh, I lost. I win. Now, Time for you to tell me. It's okay, I'll tell yourself. you. I don't really want to be the king. <laughs> um, so that was all cute. Yes. Interesting factoids. Ready? So Francis was the king. The king. Mm-hmm. He was a huge patron of the arts. Okay. That's Leonardo da Vinci coming to his so court and everything. So that makes sense. For sure. Okay. And Leonardo da Vinci actually was friends with Francis. Okay. Like, okay. Or they like knew each other and he supported Leonardo. Cool, cool. And uh, then his son, mm-hmm. Henry, right? Yes. That's his name. So Henry, fun fact, Henry did not marry a chick named whatever Drew Barrymore's he character. He didn't marry Cinderella? He did not marry Cinderella. What? But you know why he's so important? Not only... Not only to French history, but also to theatrical history, oh. because Henry married Catherine de Medici. Catherine de Medici uh-huh. was from Italy. She's from Milan. Okay. She was a patron of the arts. All the Commedia dell'arte troops, all those things, uh-huh. really went through the de Medici family. Okay. They had like a control over the arts. When he marries her, he brings all the theatrical. Tr- she brings all the theatrical traditions and all her troops and stuff mm-hmm. from Italy, where they've been touring, where theater was now kind of lost in France and in England. Mm-hmm. She brings them all into France, so all these troops are now starting to perform. People gotcha. start to kind of fall in love with theater a little bit mm-hmm. throughout the 1500s. Kinds of st- kind of starts this whole new era. Then they have kids. They start the Bourbon Dynasty. That's like Louis the Fourteenth, the Three Musketeers reign, all that kind of stuff. Oh, okay. So this is that whole family. Mm-hmm. And then Louis the Fourteenth, whose grandma loved theater, then becomes like the new sun god, and he puts on his own performances. And Moliere happens, and he builds his own huge, gigantic theaters. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> How theater came to France, as told somewhat through this movie. <laughs> Very loosely yep. and incorrectly. I just really liked the story of him marrying a servant better, though. I think that... That doesn't make any sense. Not, hey, I did I like, like the pot better. shots at Spain because yeah. the Bourbons who hate... And it was actually before that. I think it was the Valois family. I don't know. It doesn't matter. But anyways, <laughs> they hated Spain because they were the Habsburgs. And the Habsburgs, like, controlled Spain. They controlled the Netherlands. They controlled Austria, sometimes Italy. And so France just felt like they were just surrounded. And then they Mm -hmm. had the weirdo English up in the north who Mm -hmm. weren't really supportive. And so they Mm -hmm. just always felt like they were, like, on all sides. And so there's a lot of bad blood between Spain and France around this time and forward. And so that made a lot of sense. So they make fun of Spain a lot. (laughs) I love it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is just like a little peek into our marriage. <laughs> Anytime we're anywhere historical, when we travel, that is. So if you would want to rent my husband for any <laughs> tours or little lessons on history, he's game. He's game and he loves be, it. I would very much love to do that. <laughs> yep. It's fantastic. I love your love of history. It's it's one of my favorite things about you. <laughs> right, it's a good time. Yeah. It's a good time. Were there any other things that y- you had read about that you were I'll like, be hey, honest, I thought like in my head, like, oh, I'm going to get him on rock, paper, scissors. Oh, I'm oh, going to sure. get him on Utopia. Like, I'm going to add those. But you literally, I think, got all of the big ones that I could think of. Yeah. Yeah. I, they they mention the Americas a lot, and I like they how do. they always talk about like we'll send you to the Americas, like yeah. that's the punishment, which is kind of funny. Well, I think they're going to be sent to, into servitude. Yeah, in the Americas. to work so, to work like the yeah. new plantations that are yes. coming up there yeah. and, as they start to farm over there and stuff. Sure, mm-hmm. but uh. And then they talk about like chocolate coming over too. And they're like, chocolate. this is chocolate or whatever. <laughs> and I thought that was kind of cool. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, so that that whole section was was pretty yeah. neat. I mean, the only thing I could think of is that like you didn't really pick up on the the Alanis Morissette hairstyles that Drew Barrymore was rocking, <laughs> like the really long hair. It probably wouldn't have been 
like that. Well, and and the body glitter. I don't know when body glitter was invented, <laughs> but <laughs> we like really went to town on that. <laughs> I mean the the Egyptians they would sometimes like put weird paints and stuff on their bodies, but I don't know if any of them sure. were glittery. Like glitter, like yep. little chunks of metal. <laughs> yeah, that's the part that would. Or really like tricky. little sticky gems that she had on her. How about those? Yeah, I don't <laughs> those know. Invented yet. Maybe I don't know. That seems like there's some of that in the Hindu culture, but I don't know it's if true. that's yeah if that's a thing or not. <laughs> But yeah, what I love about this movie, where people talk about it, it's like very obviously like meant to be in this historical lens, but it's also very 90s. Yes. <laughs> and I think it's extra 90s if you watch the trailer oh for it. Oh my gosh. The trailer, which has this great like kind of like Celtic woman's uh-huh. techno song, yeah. which never plays in the film. Uh-uh. Actually, the actual score for this Seems film, I think it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. I really do. There's... It, it struck a chord with me. But they never play these songs that are in the trailers. There's two songs. There's a Celtic woman song, and then there's another song called Fable or something. They kind of mix them together. Is but... that the EDM one? Like, there's yeah. one that's, like, very e- yeah, at the preliminary very end of EDM it. style. Yep, exactly. Um, so it really, like, watching that, had you watched this trailer yeah. first, I think you would have been like, oh, this is definitely 90s. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is, like, late 90s. True. <laughs> Yeah, but nothing really stood out too much where I was like super like, oh, that doesn't make any sense. It all felt like real, especially mm-hmm. because it we, were, we weren't quite to Henry VIII, and that's like a good stamp in history as far as like what things kind of look like. And mm-hmm. I thought it had that similar style. So mm-hmm. it all it looked good to me. Good. I'm glad it passed the test yeah. for the most part. A couple yep. of glitches, you know, like probably... 20 to 50 years oopsies here and there. Sure. But that's not too not bad. Not too bad. I would have said that if... If everything, like it, everything was within about 20 to 30 years, mm-hmm. and if they could have just like found a way to make it really historically accurate, that would have been really cool. But I don't think it was possible. And mm-hmm. you know what? Braveheart does the same thing. Yeah. Like, let's not pretend true. like my, one of my true. favorite movies of all time doesn't do this. Mm-hmm. And uh, like Robert the Bruce and William Wallace, they could not have talked ever because they were mm-hmm. in two different generations. But yeah. it's really cool to see it, though. Yeah. This is like the 13-year-old girl version of Braveheart, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's a strong, strong I don't declaration. Think, I don't think it's strong enough. I don't. No I'm, way. Yeah. Yeah way. <laughs> no. I disagree. <laughs> Too strong. Well, what I'll say is you're not a 13-year-old girl, so you don't really get to vote. <laughs> 13 year old girls, raise your hand if you think that this is the brave heart right. for you. Go on to the Facebook group, all 13 year old girls who listen to this podcast. I would like to hear from you. But not in a weird way, not in a weird way. I actually address both of us. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oof. All right. So we kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, but um, do you have favorite fairy tales? Um. Not really. Mm-hmm. I used to think Sleepy Hollow was pretty cool, like mm-hmm. in the cartoon. You know, the old Ichabod the Crane. Ichabod Crane. Yeah, it's, I, that's scary, bro. I know, but it's I like real it. scary. It's like the perfect amount of like, at the age when I would watch it, perfect amount of like a little bit of scariness, but at the same time just very fun and cartoony and stuff. Mm-hmm. I always kind of dug that story. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I mean, I was never like I never read the Brothers Grimm. Mm-hmm. Like I never really got into those tales. All I know about them are like through other resources or sure. other mentionings from other things or people tell, telling me about them. Mm-hmm. But besides that, I don't really know them very well. Yeah. And so for me, not necessarily. Mm-hmm. What about you? Um, I mean, as a kid, I mean, Sleeping Beauty and Cinderella were probably the two ones that I played the most. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't tell you how many times I produced or directed or starred in Cinderella at my house. Sure. Like, I, I, I did it all. <laughs> Growing up, we would, I mean, that's just such an easy story to, to put on because it, it's very, like, clear beginning, middle, end. Mm-hmm. And I would always try to convince my siblings, just my two sisters at the time, to, to be a part of it and to be characters. And, um, you know, Nat was a toddler, so she couldn't do much. And then Tori always wanted to be, like, the cat. Which isn't really a role that I was casting. <laughs> There's actually no cat in this production. There's no cat in this production. That's the movie. Yeah, we'll be doing Aristocats next week, and that when you can play a cat, promise. Yeah. So I would run back and forth around the house, oh, you know, in and out of like certain doors to show, like, okay, now I'm a new character. Uh huh. 
Yeah, I remember. You would just I, do these for you. Just you guys, right? Like nobody yeah, would see them. No, just my like, my mom and dad. Maybe my grandparents if they were up visiting for something. But mm-hmm. probably just mom and dad. So that's what you have to look forward to. Hey, <laughs> did your, doesn't your mom have a story of you running through the laundry singing just around the river bend or? Uh, no. Colors yeah. of the wind. My that's just my story. Oh. <laughs> I don't know that anybody. Oh, knows okay. That I thought I, you're... Nobody knows I did that. <laughs> oh, I thought your mom knew about that. That was Pocahontas was all the rage, and yeah, yeah mom would put laundry Third outside. Grade? Uh, I think so. Yeah, yeah that sounds so right. Too. I think that's when I had my Pocahontas backpack. Mm-hmm. It's a little problematic if you think about it, but not Pocahontas. Is it? Well, okay, so my backpack had Pocahontas and John Smith on it, and so that's a little problematic. If you think sure. about like the real Pocahontas and yeah. John Smith, it doesn't really. Yeah. It's kind of gross. Well, I would doesn't say really just work. you having a backpack of Pocahontas is No, that's not bad. That's cool. that, I think that was, yeah. But no, I would dance around in the. As the laundry would sway in the wind outside, <laughs> I would run through it and sing that song. Was it just around the river bend or all the colors of the wind? Colors of the wind. Colors of the wind. And then it like I would wait for the wind to pick up, and that's when I would really hit like the climax yeah. of the song. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I was a very theatrical little kid. Yeah, I think. you were. I you think. were. I mean, <laughs> I. W- I would like tell stories with like Power Rangers and I would fight like snowmen and stuff that Mm -hmm. I would create. But I, yeah, I wouldn't do like productions like that. No. We would put puppet shows on. Like I would make like little paper dolls and put them on sticks on like toothpicks or not toothpicks, popsicle sticks. Yep. And we'd set up chairs and put a blanket over it and then go like, (laughs) (laughs) I'm all about that. Even when I babysat when I was older. I made the kids put productions on, and then when their parents came home, then we did a play for well, them. Well, here's what I'll say. <laughs> that makes you look like a great babysitter. I wasn't when, the babysitter. When parents come home and they're like, I wonder what they did. I wonder what Rachel did with my kids today. Mm-hmm. And then they see a production. <laughs> I feel like you'd be like, oh, they. she's awesome. She's awesome. Dude, they, I got home and they did a production for me. How freaking sweet is that? Yep, I had them slaving away on their lines. So I'm coming back tomorrow, but so-and-so needs to be off book. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm going to take that role away from her and give it to her brother. Tell her that. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure that. I need to see more hard. Ground your performance. <laughs> I just... We need a beat there. Tanya, we need a beat there. <laughs> Do you know what that means? Yep. <laughs> Eric, show her. <laughs> I just really want mac and cheese. All right. I don't want to give you a line reading, Tanya. but. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, that was just a peek, a peek into my childhood. <laughs> hey, let's talk about like some of the weird things in Brothers Grimm stories. Yeah, like is it mm-hmm. in Little Mermaid? Yeah, she Little turns Mermaid's into like sea really foam weird. at the end. Like she just yep. like pretty much dies. She pretty much dies. She saves him, and then he I don't know if he casts he her off her or, or something, something like yeah. that. But yeah, it's and she just like pretty sad. much kills she herself. She pretty much like... just dies. And then in um in the Seven Dwarves, mm-hmm. aren't they? Don't they like capture her and like enslave her? Oh, and like, maybe. like make her like do horrible things and stuff. <laughs> I think that happens. I don't. I, don't know, I could be making that, that up. That could be a scary movie version that like came out that I, I saw like one it. time. I like it. But I think there's something weird with Seven Dwarves as well, where like they do weird stuff. It's in that all movie. a little weird. Even the ones that, you know, like Hansel and Gretel. Like, yeah. Even that one, we know it's already weird. I think mm-hmm. it's even weirder. Now that was a cool story. <laughs> I dug that in like grade school. It's a terrifying story. I know. I liked it's a it though. Terrifying story. Like the, story. the kids tricking. Her like with the chicken bones and stuff. I like oh, thought that God. that was so smart. And then yeah. they shove her in the oven and they run out. They shove her in the oven. I know. I kind of dug o- it. Yeah. What? Did you well, ever? Did you ever read um, the Stinky Cheese Man and other fables? Yes, fables? I love like that book. Like the gingerbread book. man always the Stinky Cheese Man. Oh, that was such. The a artwork hit. was so cool. Yeah, it was really cool. That was that stuck out to me as a kid. That book did because mm-hmm. it was so different. Yep, I liked those stories. Mm-hmm. They were fun. That was a good time. <laughs> Excellent. Any other movie pieces that you want to talk about? Otherwise, I'm gonna wrap it up and tell you a couple of budget things and okay. Get your uh, um, I liked having a good stepsister. Yeah. I thought that changed up the whole thing. Instead the of having two annoying nice. stepsisters, mm-hmm. I thought it was really fun to have one stepsister who was like honest and like. Mm-hmm. Then you had the one that was conniving and like the most evil character. It made it more believable too because you think like. I think, like you said earlier, we could figure out why the stepmom and her had kind of a, a tiff, but then, then to have two kind of rotten stepsisters, mm-hmm. like, or to be both bratty, and the one of them, I mean, the good one isn't like a hundred percent good. She's still pretty spoiled, but yeah. like, she's she's just cares and she's funny and mm-hmm. she's 
Yeah, also gets left behind a lot, too. Yep. Mother, what have you done? Your Majesty, like you, I'm just a victim here. She's lied to us both, and I'm ashamed to call her family. How dare you turn on me, you little ingrate? You see? You see what I have to put up with? Silence, both of you. Good Lord. Are they always like this? Worse, Your Majesty. Jacqueline, darling, I'd hate to think you had anything to do with this. Of course not, Mother. I'm only here for the food. Hey, how do you feel at the end of the movie? Mm -hmm. Drew Barrymore like runs into the prince's arms and then he spins her just like over and over and over and over again. And then the the camera even pans way back and they're still spinning. Yeah. And I don't know if I've spun you before. You can get about two spins and then I think it's horrible for everybody. Yeah. It's like I don't want to keep spinning as the girl. And I think as a guy, you're like, oh, it's getting heavy now, no matter how light you are. Sure. And so it just becomes <laughs> this annoying thing. But they just kept spinning forever. They needed to get the shot of the shoe because he puts the glass slipper on her and they're spinning around and they had a drone or something at the time and they're zooming out and they just keep spinning. Keep going. Hey, what'd you think of the peacock and that horse outfit that the stepsisters the wear to the I love the animals that prom. they chose. I thought that was great. And I love that the horse, um, so the stepsister, that's a little bit like bigger and the not as- The um, nice one. The nicer one, yeah. Um, there's a guy, a guard at the wedding who also has a horse and they- They do a little neighing. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> they have a little moment because yep. they matched. Which I would normally think is silly and stupid. It is silly. But- the movie earned that moment because oh. the movie wasn't all silly and stupid. Like if no. that was in the Lily James version, I'd be like, oh, I'm so annoyed with all this stupid slapsticky stuff. Sure. Like, get mm-hmm. out of here. This is yeah. dumb. But in this movie, it was cute because the movie was so real and grounded mm. that I was like, you earned a little moment of silliness because people can be silly. Mm-hmm. But we're just the whole thing shouldn't be silly over the top nonsense. Sure. It's not a comedy. Yeah. It's not meant to and be. And so I thought mm-hmm. that that was well deserved and it was sweet. Mm-hmm. I like some of the little quotes in this movie. Yeah? Like, Did you write some down? A bird can love a fish, but where will they live? And what's he say, Rach? And I shall build you wings. Oh, I oh, thought that, that was, was so romantic. Yeah, Leonardo to Danielle or Drew Barrymore's character. Yep. He tells her that yep. as it's the like, fairy godmother. And then she comes said. in with wings afterwards. I was like, oh, that was cute. Yeah, that's one of my faves. Yeah. Um... I have a couple other quotes, but I'll have to keep looking through. So I have a problem in movies. Mm. When they address this eventually in the next scene, Mm -hmm. when people get punched in the face Mm. and they don't have a mark or blemish on them, no matter what happens in real life, if I punched you in the face, Uh you would have a mark. Like even if it's not a black eye, Mm -hmm. you would have a bloody lip or you would have a bruise on your cheek. Mm -hmm. Something's going to happen. The prince gets punched in the face looks pristine afterwards oh, yeah. even his hair is gorgeous after his black fight eye, does he? nope yeah. and mm-hmm. then the drew barrymore punches the evil stepsister in the so face satisfying. and then <laughs> they show shots of her like four other times in that scene mm-hmm. and she doesn't have a blemish on her like sure. she just looks completely normal like mm-hmm. not even flustered like her makeup's not even messed up yeah. but then in the next scene they show her the black eye and i was like mm-hmm. okay you addressed it eventually but i yeah. think that there should still be this is one of those little things. Mm-hmm. There needs to be a little swelling. There needs to be a little redness around wherever the punch was. Sure. And as a director, you need those those attentions to details. Yeah. I don't disagree with it's that. Where, it's where mm-hmm. the money's at. Yeah. And it wasn't like it was a scene that they couldn't cut away and do that, you know, mm-hmm. as, as she's chasing her around the house. She probably could have gotten some makeup in there, too. I oh, think. hey, uh, there were some great lip bites in this movie. Yeah, Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore gives a strong bite. one, oh, and that's what makes it kind of like modern at times. Yeah. Mm. Like, no, it's Lip not like bite. no, it's Hi, cuter. Mm. No, it's cuter. <laughs> it's, it's not like that at all. No, it was it was cute, but it was a strong lip bite. A strong lip bite, very game. strong. <laughs> and speaking of lip bites, hmm. how'd you feel about this line? Your mouth has me hypnotized. <laughs> Your mouth has me hypnotized. You gotta set it up. You gotta Your mouth has me hypnotized. <laughs> All right, we'll just we'll just try to find the real clip so you can hear the back and forth. It's smoldery for yeah. sure. Um, how do you like that tennis ball game? The, uh, the tennis, the tennis, the match? tennis match. Yeah, all which the is like racquetball. They hit it against the wall. Yeah, I thought it was cool. I was I like, I didn't oh, know shoot. if that was accurate or not, but. Uh-huh. Yeah, so the prince is having a tennis match game, and 
word's gotten out that he's now a very eligible bachelor and that he's looking for a suitor and there's all these women and he like flies out of bounds at one time and all these women just like attack him and then he comes out and he's got all of these like handkerchiefs yeah, stuffed like... all over him <laughs> in every which way. Yeah, you know, that was so cool. I thought it was very funny. Yeah, it was very much like it had that celebrity kind of appeal yeah, to it in that yeah. scene. That was cool. And they're like, oh. Okay, so there's this there's this moment, and it's this first area of conflict between the stepmom and Drew Barrymore that you really see. Mm-hmm. There was a servant. They have two servant ladies, mm-hmm. and then there's a servant man who she, the stepmom, sold mm-hmm. to pay off some debt. Yep. Which is a thing that happens. It happened in Rome all the time, mm-hmm. and you split up families. It's just one of those things that happens. Mm-hmm. And so Drew Barrymore then gets money from the prince, like when she first throws apples at him, and she takes that money and she uses it to free him. Mm-hmm. Now, he comes back, Mm -hmm. and he starts kissing both the old ladies. And I mentioned to you, I was like, "Uh, is this a thruple? What's going on here? You knew what was going on. Don't pretend. No, it looks like a thruple. He hugs and kisses the oldest one, his wife, who runs to him. And then the other one, the younger of the two, the middle-aged woman, comes over and it hugs and kisses him, too. But I mean, there was only like 10 years difference between the old one and the young one. They weren't that big of a gap. It's generational. She's probably their daughter. No, (laughs) I felt like there was something going on there. You've got a 70-year-old couple, and then you've got a... 50, 40 year old woman. Yeah. And then you got Drew Barrymore, old. who's 23. So it's like, it's generational. I don't know, man. Something was afoot. Oh, no, gosh. That's what I'll say. <laughs> hey, how'd you like this line? You tub of guts. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> hey, I thought her goofy haired buddy was kind of cute. So Drew Barrymore has this goofy haired kid oh, who, best who looks like he cuts his own hair. Like yeah. it's like a really bad haircut. It's a really funny. That was a fun little friendship. He's yeah. kind of like the mice. I think you would think of him as a mouse character. Sure. You know, in the, yes. In the fairy tale version. He's also a painter. He helps her with uh, getting dressed to when she first kind of dresses up to pretend to be a, a noble woman. Mm-hmm. Um, he does, helps her with her hair and stuff. Yeah, I think it's fun. In the beginning of the movie when they're kids, he comes out and it looks like they got in like a mud fight and he's like just drenched in mud. <laughs> you're like, geez, Drew Barrymore, what'd you do? Do you like yeah. throw him into the mud and you like rubbed him in it like eight times and yeah, he's like, ah, I can't get up. <laughs> they got in a mud fight. Yeah, She's I awesome. Suppose. Yeah, she killed it. Yeah. Which so I thought that character. was a nice, cute little turn. Mm-hmm. And there was a moment in time where I was like, wait, is this going to be one of those love stories where it's like, I don't want the prince. I want to be with the, my servant bunny. Mm-hmm. But then they do a good job of like a little ways in being like, oh, no, that's not the story we're telling. I think, too, when you see the servant buddy like growing up, you're like, nope. It's not going to be you. You know what I mean? <laughs> what about like Pretty in Pink, like Ducky or whatever? Like Ducky's... I wondered if it was going to be a Ducky type I mean, thing. But Ducky's cuter than this guy was. Yeah, that's true, yeah. but not by much. Mm-hmm. Uh, Debatable. No. Debatable. Uh-uh. <laughs> Did you know that this was made into a TV show? A musical? No. It was... Ever after the musical? Yeah, it didn't do very well. How, I when think did it this was come only. Out? It was originally in 2000. Well, no. So it was meant to debut in 2009, but it hit several delays and it opened in 2015. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Six years later, we had a lot of problems <laughs> with those fairy wings. Oh my gosh! Um, the initial run only lasted one month, and that was in New Jersey. And then they did another production again in February of 2019 in Atlanta, but again, okay. only a one month. Yeah, thing. So, it sounds like something that's not going to make it to I Broadway. I don't think it's... I think they were trying to trial it. They were and, trying. Yep, they were and trying. it's not going to work out. They had the wings in the picture that I saw, so that was cool. But yeah. again, I don't know... Is it needed? That's my question. I mean, well, if you don't like Rodgers and Ham, maybe you would like a better Cinderella story if the music was good. Here's what I'll say. I don't need a musical version of Cinderella. <laughs> oh, I don't. Oh, you don't, you? I would take another movie that's kind of like Ever After and stuff. Like, I mm-hmm. could get on board with this telling the story, mm-hmm. but I don't need a musical of it. Yeah. No, not at all. I agree. I agree. I didn't yeah. need it to be a musical. Mm-hmm. I like it that it's not. Yeah. Hmm. Overall budget for this, 26 mil. Okay. Obviously with France and all of the time period piece, it gets a little pricey. Uh-huh. I don't know how expensive Angelica Houston is, but she's pretty great. <laughs> I'd pay for her again. <laughs> um, worldwide, it made $98 million, So. Okay. She was so a did hit. did well. She was a hit. Yep. Um, do you want me to give you my critics' consensus and all of that, or do you yeah. want to go first? Nope. You okay. go ahead and give Critics' consensus. Ever After is a sweet, frothy twist on the ancient fable led by a solid turn from Star Barrymore. Rotten Tomatoes score, 91%. Oh, wow. 91%. 
Audience score, 84%. It's okay. a little bit less, but sure. it did well. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing like, um, it doesn't have like any awards for anything mm-hmm. other than best sleaze ball. <laughs> 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 just, a, just a nom there for Miss Houston. But yeah, overall it was well received. Everybody, not ev- everybody, everybody says, loved it. Everyone loved it. Everyone says it's the best Cinderella movie of all time. <laughs> Which it is. I mean, it is. I will say that. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's a, it's a great retelling, a modern feminist retelling of mm-hmm. a story that, yeah, it's just, it's great. I, it's great, you guys. It is. It's, it's a, so good. I recommend it. You guys should check it out. Strong recommendation. If you've never heard of it, just ugh, give it a go. Yep. Give it a go. All right. So here, let me, are you ready for it? I'm so ready. Okay. So here's what I have. Ever After is less fairy and more reality. And that helps this movie have some real wings. 69%. 69%? Now, All 69 right. might sound low. It does sound and I, a little I harsh. had trouble because I wanted to rate this movie higher, but I've rated other movies that like when I do the, the like comparison, that's where things get tricky. And so it's tied with Teen Wolf. Oof. It's it's ahead. It's Oof. below Terminator 1. Okay. Because if I had to watch one, Terminator 1 or I this know. movie, I, I pick Terminator 1. So I mean I guess I would e- I could even go higher than Teen Wolf at sixty nine and a half percent, but mm-hmm. I don't really want to get into that. Yeah. And so it's as higher than P.S. I Love You, it's higher than Save the Last Dance. So it's it's very high on the chick flick mm-hmm. level. Like that's a pretty good score for it's me. Pretty good score. Yep. For I me, it. I have the same problem, especially when I get into like my movies that I rated in the nineties. Mm-hmm. So I had it was First Wives Club. I think like at a ninety one or ninety two. I think I have that in the nineties too. Yeah. I think I want to put this pretty close to that. Mm-hmm. I would like to maybe bump First Wives Club to like a 93 and then put this one at a 91, okay. I think, or the 92, somewhere in there. Like it just, it's solid. It's and very solid. It is solid. I yep. love it. I, I I don't think I have room in my top 10 for it, but if it if it made the cut or it's just outside of it, it just, because it's held up for me for so many years mm-hmm. and because I have so, uh, such a strong attachment to this movie from being 12 like i just loved it yeah just loved it well i mean i will i will tell people if, if they're like me and they were on the fence about it it is worth a watch Aww. you will not regret it it is a good time i really enjoyed it yeah i say a lot of good things about it it's you awesome. did say a lot of good things about it <sighs> i know it's coming <laughs> i'm not i can't believe you're gonna do this to me we just watched such a pleasant movie together. We did. And it was so lovely. We did. And this is how you repay me. My last two will be a lot kinder. Yeah? I promise. All right. Yep. I have two. My two <laughs> final picks are very enjoyable. <laughs> um. Okay. So I'm finally going to do it. We're finally going to have our legitimate scary movie review. I am making Rach. I've been working on this behind the scenes for a long time. And Rach agreed to it. Then she tried to back out of it recently. <laughs> I was just starting the format, and then she backed down on it. And then I did my other two formats because she was like, "No, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it." I got scared. You got scared. Oh and God. then I won her over. What I party? I promised to have like a party, kind of like we did for the It party mm-hmm. for when I wanted Rach to watch It. I had to watch the movie beforehand. Obviously, I watched it in theaters. That was awesome. And I have to tell her when all the jump scares are. I say hide or like duck into my chest. <laughs> hey, you might wanna. Yeah, you. Hey, you might ready. wanna. And then she like buries her head in my arm, which is very sweet. I love that moment. And then. And a jump scare will happen, and then she can kind of look up when she wants to, when she's sure. ready. And so I have done that to prep for this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. We also, for it, we made a party out of it. We had friends over. We'll see if we do that. But we made like a whole occasion where we had like animal crackers. We had Yo Root Beer floats too. <laughs> um, we had uh, circus peanuts. Mm-hmm. And it was it Sour was Patch Kids. Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> yeah, the little kids. So we made it really a really fun event. Yeah. This next one. Let me tell you about some of the treats we'll have oh, before I announce the movie. You I don't, already know I don't even is. know this. So we're going to have hockey pucks. Okay. We'll have something that's like knife related. I haven't really figured out how that's going to work yet, but something that's like a, a knife or a machete or something <laughs> like that. And we will have hockey mask cookies. Because ladies and gentlemen, we're going to watch the 2009 remake. <sighs> Of the solid slasher film, my favorite slasher of all time, Yeah. Friday the 13th, and it's going to be awesome. <laughs> oh, no. 
I already oh. watched it. I already went through, and oh. I, I I know when all the jumps are. I there's so much stuff we're gonna talk about. You will hate it. <laughs> you will. You will not like. It. You will be like, I can't believe you made me watch this. Oh, and this isn't like Halloween three. This isn't a fun scary movie. This is a legit scary movie. And I think they did a good job of updating it, where it can be can be a little scary at oh times. My gosh. But this is probably, I'm also going to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. enjoy it because it's never going to happen again. Yeah. This is it. I, I cashed in all my cards. <laughs> I cashed in everything. All the chips. I actually don't even get to watch another scary movie with Rach the rest of the year. Nope. Not so, unless I initiate it. Yep. So, so here this it is, is. This is it. Here it is. And we have other scary movies that I might be able to talk her into in the future, but they will, <laughs> they'll be fun scary movies. They will not be actually scary. This is my one shot. Oh, man. So, so yeah. Friday the 13th. Tune in next time. Next week. It's going to be a blasty blast. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. Breathe. Tell me.